Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Do please like and subscribe. It's down there, folks. Yeah, a link to my uh, interviews with Sean Atwood and uh, James English. Uh, also, my book link down there. I'm going to talk today about the complete and utter ineptitude of the police at the moment. There's a case currently... Uh, ongoing where a police officers have been charged with misconduct believe this or not a 10 year old girl he, he tasered her now you know these tasers they shoot like prongs that go into your body and then they pump you full of a, an electric charge that causes you to collapse and uh, it, this guy was called to a disturbance at a house He's Police Constable Jonathan Broadhead, and he's accused of gross misconduct. Uh, he was not, he used unreasonable, unnecessary, and disproportionate force when he responded to uh, a 999 call. Uh, apparently, this 10-year-old girl was just being a little bit boisterous and had uh, quite serious, really. Uh, threatened her mother with a pair of garden shears and uh, hit her with a hammer or something. Just completely and utterly out of hand, I suppose. But a 10-year-old girl, it took him approximately eight seconds from entering the house to actually firing the taser at the girl. So he didn't give her really a chance, you know. To say, right, calm down, you know, what's the matter, young lady? <clears throat> Just uh, shot this thing into her, and he's currently undergoing a disciplinary hearing for gross misconduct. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, what What's going through somebody's mind like that? I mean, if I went to uh, somebody's house and called to help, and... Uh, young child was behaving in a, a crazy, aggressive manner, I'd do my very best to talk them down, you know. I certainly wouldn't consider using force. <laughs> and as for using a taser on a 10-year-old girl, and that's not the... It's not the only uh, issue that there's been with police using tasers. They tasered uh, some... I believe, I believe it was about 80-year-old 80, 80 lady... <clears throat> and uh, they, they seem to be out of hand. I, did you, and also we're talking about the, the ineptitude of the police. The chief constable of Scotland, the chief constable of Scotland, <clears throat> has just been using police transport as a, as a personal taxi service. In one instance, she was driven 125 miles in a police car by a police officer rather than use her own transport or get get a taxi. Now, that, that's misuse of <clears throat> public uh, public service goods, yeah. And what 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 next? <clears throat> in the news today, a detective. A female detective has been uh, charged with stealing fifty thousand pounds, fifty thousand pounds out of the evidence room, and she spent this on I don't know bits and bats. A spend she had a spending spree with the money that she stole. What's going through people's minds? How does that work? I mean, if you're a police officer, you're there to uphold the law, you know. You certainly wouldn't do that. I tell you, if you go back, when I was involved in, in the criminal justice system, it, it would be unthinkable, you know, that these things would go on. Occasionally you're going to get somebody who is a little, what they call a bad apple, but it seems to be it virtually every day. And in the Metropolitan Police, there are currently a thousand officers awaiting disciplinary hearings. That's like one in ten. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Anyway, yeah, it's the same with the prison system. I mean, uh, we've got numerous inmates who were prison officers who have been charged with, a lot of them, having inappropriate relations with inmates. That's uh, when the whole stess system starts to break down and they start to be seduced by these sophisticated alpha males in, in the prisons because the Home Office can't recruit staff. And so they've started recruiting uh, teenage girls and young women, putting them into positions where they are exploited by the inmates very quickly. And I've read incidences where female officers have been left in charge of a hundred adult males in uh, <clears throat> on recreation time on their own. I mean, you can imagine how much how much authority they're carrying when they when they do that. No authority. They're not going to be listened to. They they're going to be have the piss ripped out of them. Also, I read recently that uh, a number of officers were experiencing uh, attacks from inmates who were suffering from uh, drug addiction, they overdosed on spice or whatever else they've managed to get in the prison. And this is a, a, a recurring thing. They don't seem to be able to control it. I mean, and the problem is, of course, that the people who are, a lot of it in, in prison, are drug dealers who have been arrested, thrown into prison. And, uh, that, of course, because they're drug dealers, then they want to, they can get the drugs in. So people are smuggling the drugs in. I recently uh, discussed this with serving officers, and they're saying that uh, the problem that they had was that uh, a lot of the officers who were smuggling drugs in were getting paid £500 a time for taking in a, a package that's no more than a, 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 about four or five ounces of, uh, of, of, of spice or weed or whatever it is. They get £500 a time. And the inmates who are in the prison are going into debt whilst in prison to get their hands on this stuff. So they're never going to be free. I mean, this is not rehabilitation. This is taking people who have come into prison who maybe never touched drugs in their life, and there it is, the cellmates and their fellow inmates are hooked up on this stuff and getting them involved in it. So it isn't just the police that are falling, the system is falling apart. The prison system is falling apart and I'm absolutely convinced that the right way about this is to shed all these short-term sentences and have a minimum prison sentence of three years so that it works like a training, a, uh, a schooling course, preparing the offenders to re-enter society and to do so in a meaningful manner so that they have some training. If they're illiterate, they're, they're put on a basic uh, education course. Or if they are literate, then they can go on onto a, a trade course. Some people are extremely intelligent who are committing offences. I think back, of course, to my previously mentioned uh, Mark Leach, who did a master's degree in law whilst he was in prison. And uh, he put it to good use when he came out, and he hasn't offended since. Mind you, he, did, he had been in virtually every prison in Britain because he was on what's known as the ghost train. Are you all familiar with the ghost train? It's when you get shipped from prison to prison, from segregation block to segregation block, and round you go. If you've been causing disruption, then that is what happens. And Mark Leach was once uh, on the roof at Dartmoor Prison, uh, and he had a little tent, and he was up there, I think, for about five days. He said it was extremely cold. <laughs> yeah, 
Go and have a look at Dartmoor Prison. It's right in the middle of the of the moors, in, in a little just outside a little village called Prince Town, on on Dartmoor. Yeah, weird weird looking place. Written about by who is it? Uh, yeah, Arthur Conan Doyle. In uh, his story about uh, the Hound of the Baskervilles. So anyway, that's my little rant for today about uh, the problems that we've got with the police, the police, and of course the uh, the prisons, where everything seems to be falling apart, and the rule of law has effectively disintegrated to a certain extent, and nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody. Anyway, it's time for. Uh, should we have a, p- a poem, yeah? I'll, I'll ring the ding dong song dinger. The song dinger, there we are, folks. Yeah, and I'll read you a poem, yeah? Because you don't really want to hear me singing again after that terrible mess I made of the other one. All right, uh, let me see now. What should we, what should we read you, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right, this is a strange one. I haven't read this before here, so here we go, I'll read this one. It's called The Donkey by G.K. Chesterton. Are you sitting comfortably? The Donkey. When fishes flew and forests walked and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood... Then surely I was born, with monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody of all four-footed things. The tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, starved, scourge, deride me, I am dumb, I keep my secret still fools for I also had my hour one far fierce hour and sweet there was a shout about my ears and palms before my feet it's a donkey by G.K. Chesterton I sincerely hope you enjoyed that Tales from the Jails. <laughs>